Welcome to the um, <clears throat> fourth lesson on uh, of the knowledge representation on the web course. Um, today we will be looking at querying knowledge graphs. So, or um, just to give you a, a recap of what we've done before, um, we looked at the history of knowledge representation on the web. We looked at um, RDF uh, as a mean to create and save knowledge graphs. Uh, we looked at RDFS uh, to our um, language to add semantics and meaning to your knowledge graph. Um, we extended the semantics with OWL that include allows to include additional semantic restrictions. Uh, we looked at ontology engineering, so how to build a large knowledge graphs um, in a structural manner. Um, and what we will do today is how to query existing knowledge graphs, especially large ones. Uh, so there is um, usually there is different ways of querying RDF uh, knowledge graphs. Um, the first way is uh, dereferencing, which basically means that you get a copy of a specific resource uh, of the graph you are looking for. Um, the dereferencing the means that you um, usually run one request per resource. So remember that a knowledge graph is a, is a set of triples where every triple is composed of a subject, predicate, object, and, and resources can be um, most often subjects and objects, predicates as well uh, sometimes. Um, uh, here with the referencing, you you basically ask to return all the triples that are known about that uh, that resource. Um, it's called a follow your nose approach, which means that once you dereference a resource, you get a set of triples. You can then fetch additional resources and one by one keep on um, on requesting information. Um, uh, from uh, from uh, the server you are uh, you are, you are contacting. Uh, most of the time, you can use um, facilities such as CURL, um, but you need to remember to specify the headers. Like uh, you are basically asking the, the the server to return a specific resource in a certain format. So it can be RDF, uh, XML, it can be Tarto. Um, and what you get is simply um, a, 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 a small uh, file which represents the copy of the resource you've been requesting um, from online. <clears throat> the second um, the second approach to, to querying RDF uh, graphs is Sparkle. Sparkle is a query language which basically allows you to um, request a given portion of your data. So this is more of a, of a database-like um, language, like SQL. Um, what you, the, the problem with this approach is that you always need to uh, identify an endpoint interface. So you need to know where the uh, knowledge graph lies um, and whether there is an, an open endpoint and, and an endpoint available where you can actually run your Sparkle queries. Um, ultimately, you can request uh, a full copy of your uh, RDF graph. This is called the dump. Um, and what you basically get is a, it's a, it's a local copy of a whole graph. So then you, what you can do is that you can save it into your own triple store and run it uh, locally, which is obviously much faster than running uh, than, than requesting information from the web. Um, you can also uh, download a dump uh, of your RDF uh, graph and convert it in a, in a different format. Um, these are just um, sets of existing uh, triple stores that you can be using. GraphDB is, um, is the one that, um, that we will be using in this course, but many others are available. Stardog is one. Uh, Gina is a library. Apache Gina is a library that, um, if, that allows you to uh, manipulate RDF if um, um, uh, if you're using Java, and there's many more that have been um, created over the years. In this uh, course and in this lesson, we will be looking at Sparkle. So we forget about dereferencing, we forget about dumps. Uh, and what we will be um, uh, 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 looking at is how to create Sparkle queries, how to create, uh, how to uh, retrieve information that we want, and what are the different parts of 
the, the queries. Sparkle can be defined as the protocol and, and query language for uh, the standard protocol and query language for RDF. Uh, what you see in this picture is, is, is your first Sparkle query. So this is just a set of um, um, uh, the, the, a syntax a set of, of, of patterns that you need to use uh, when you create a Sparkle query. Usually in a Sparkle query, you have four parts. The first part, which is the, the orange block, is the is called the prologue, uh, where you usually in, uh, include the declaration that you will be using throughout the query. Most of the time, you will meet here the prefixes that are go uh, going to be used in, um, in the rest of the query. The, um, the prefixes, we discussed about prefixes and what are the most standard prefixes, and, um, and uh, we discussed on how to use prefixes instead of namespaces. The prologue can also be empty, which means that you are going to use the full extended URIs in your in your query. The second part of the query is 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 the query, the actual query close. So here we are basically specifying uh, what do you want to get back and how in which format. Uh, we are going to to see in the next slide that there are different types of of query clauses that we that can be used. So different type of, of uh, requests that can be um, uh, written request formats um, that can be asked. The, the most important part of the, the Sparkle query is the where clause. This is, the, this, is this blue blo block where that specifies the parts of the graph that you might want to be looking for. What you basically do in a where clause is that you build a graph pattern. This means a set of, of, of triples that are um, composed of um, uh, bounds, URIs, and, and, and variables that need to be matched against the, the graph that you are going to, uh, that you are going to uh, extract inf information from. Um, there are additional modifiers. This is the, the last part of your queries. There are also modifiers like this filter, which appear inside the where clause. Usually these modifiers allow you to perform operations to restrict certain results. Uh, we are going to get into details in the next slides as well. Um, as we said, there are four query close forms. The, um, uh, the, the difference between these forms is the, the type of uh, results you get from the query. An ask query, uh, given a graph, returns a, a Boolean answer, a yes or no. You are basically asking information in the graph. Is there certain information in your graph, yes or no? With a construct query, you, you uh, query the original graph, and what you obtain in, in return in your results is a new graph with a new shape. The describe is, um, is less common to use. Uh, you usually uh, give, uh, you can only give a URI in, uh, as an input, and then what you get is a, is a, is a graph, which mostly represents a, uh, the set of triples where this resource is known. Finally, the most common uh, clause form, the one that you will be using more is um, the most is the select. So the select is a query, um, a query clause form that given a graph returns a table. So you need to get the to get familiar with these four forms just in case you might you might um, encounter them when developing your own application. Uh, the most common one is the select, and then we will be seeing examples over the course of, of ask and construct uh, queries too. Um, let's start with um, with simple uh, examples of how to create select queries. What you do in a select is that you um, uh, you start creating graph patterns that you will match against your graph. Uh, here we have a graph that represents a resource uh, of, a, of a person that is actually a, of a teacher that, that is by um, uh, transitivity a person, um, is somebody that lives in Amsterdam, which is a city, is also born in another place, which is a city and then has certain information about uh, musical likings, so like a rock band. Um, what you can do when you have such 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 a such a graph is that you can start building a graph pattern. For example, you have you might want to request um, to create a query with one triple pattern and one variable in it. Here we do select. This is um, the um, uh, the query clause. 
Then we have the projection, so the set of variables that you want to retrieve. And then we have the where clause. Here we ask for a variable. We ask to select any subject that is stated as being a teacher. Remember this A is a replacement for RDF type. We say this in um, one of the previous lessons and it's very common to see that in Sparkle queries. The result is, um, uh, is a table. We say that select allows you to return tables. Um, in the table, the, the, the header of um, every column will be a variable. Um, the header is the name of the variable you chose. And then the, the, the rest of the column is called the binding. So the information that is found in the graph, um, which uh, matches the, the pattern that it, the, the graph, the triple pattern that has been asked. The triple pattern in this case is uh, anything that has a type teacher. So in the next slides, you will see, you always see the um, highlighted, the, 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 the graph patterns or the triple patterns that are being matched uh, in the graph. This was a very easy example, and then we can increase in complexity. So you can still have one triple pattern in your where clause. A triple pattern is just one row in your where clause. Uh, if you have multiple rows, then you have multiple triple patterns. Um, your projection can then include two um, more than one variable. So in this case, we have the variable subject and the variable object. We say that these variables are then returned in as columns in the in the in the projection table as a result. So here you have the subject and which is still matched. We still we are still we are still asking about any subject that is born in any place. <clears throat> uh, the result is that we identify that the Ilaria is being uh, matched again the subject variable. And then the, the resource roam is being matched against the object variable. So we, again, we have um, two, one triple pattern, two variables and two bindings, one per variable. Then we have, um, we might want to increase in complexity and add additional patterns. So here you see how we are using a prologue again. So we are adding a prefix to make things um, easier to read. Um, we are asking about, um, uh, we're asking about one variable. Sorry, this is a mistake. You shouldn't consider this. Um, we ask about one variable. This is subject. And we ask for any resource that is of type teacher and that is born in Rome. Recall that we use semicolons when the triples share the same subject. So in this case, it, this would be equivalent to writing subject A X teacher, subject born in Rome. Um, again, the result will be um, Ilaria because this is what is being merged in the graph. The same thing we can do is that is by adding additional variables. So in this case, we ask for anybody that might be uh, declared as being a teacher and born uh, in a specific place. In this case, we have two columns with two variables and the bindings are, uh, are again only one. Imagine if we were having multiple people, for example, Ilaria and also Romana as being declared as a teacher, the subject will, uh, we will have then two, one additional row returning the result for the additional person matching the, the triple button. Um, we might encounter often also uh, hidden variables. A hidden variable is a variable that is, is declared in the where clause, but is not asked into the projection. So here the, the, in the projection, we're only asking for subject. But in the where clause, we have two variables. So there are there might be cases in which you need to include hidden variables. And this is uh, uh, it comes with at no cost. Your uh, it might be slightly slower, but uh, in most of the case uh, most of the cases this is what you might need. Uh, of course, queries can become um, more complicated. So you start requesting many triple patterns in the where clause. You see here one, two, three, four, five triple patterns. Um, so what you are basically asking is a full, is a subgraph as part of 
your graph. So you ask return a, a sub, please, can I please get it return a subgraph of your graph, which must, matches the triples that I am declaring. Um, notice the use of the star here. Um, you can um, you can use it, and you will see it being used very often. Um, the star allows to return all the variables that are being declared into uh, into the where clause. I will leave you a few minutes to uh, to to try to figure out what the result of this query is. You might want to stop it, uh, stop the video now, and then um, proceed once you have uh, figured out the answer. Going into the answer, we said that the um, star allows you to uh, to request all the variables in the where clause, which means we might we are requesting one, two, three, four five um, variables, and this is exactly what we get in the resulting table. So one, two, three, four, five. And as you see, the bindings are nothing but the subgraph. So a subgraph is, again, a chunk of your graph, which matches the, the patterns that you've been expressing. Finally, we discussed about uh, modifiers. So what we might want to, to do sometimes is that we might want to, to uh, restrict certain results. So maybe we do have um, lots of results and there are too many, and we might want to shrink the information in the resulting table by using uh, operators like filter. The filter is a very common operator. You can do filters over numericals. You can do filters over strings. You can do... Uh, you can actually do a lot of operations in Sparkle. I recommend you to, to watch the, the Sparkle query specification because this is your main reference. It's like it's a proper documentation where you can find how to use Sparkle and um, what is the right syntax to apply filters, bindings, concatenations, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, in this example, we are requesting uh, to return cities, like a variable city. So uh, resources that are declared as being cities that have a population, that have a given population. And we want this population, uh, the binding of this population variable to be higher than 1 million. The result is only Rome. So in our graph, we have two cities. We have Amsterdam and we have Rome. The in, in in this particular query we are requesting um, uh, we are requesting resources that uh, whose population is higher than one million. As you can see, eight uh, hundred thousand uh, Amsterdam is uh, includes eight hundred thousand uh, people, and this is not enough to for for our filter, which means that this resource goes away is excluded from the resulting table, and the only result that we get is the city of Rome. We discussed earlier about ask queries. Uh, an ask query is a query that where you get a boolean response from your graph. So this, as as we said, as we saw, select allows you to return um, to get a, a table as a result that you can then process in uh, in your own um, uh, in, in your preferred um, processing language. Um, with ask, you just get a Boolean true or false, false answer. In this case, so we don't need uh, um, a where clause, um, and you don't need um, uh, projection, projecting variables anymore. Uh, you only need um, the, uh, the query clause, the ask query clause, and then you need to specify your, triple, your graph pattern or triple, triple patterns in, in, uh, inside uh, this clause. Um, here we are asking whether there exists um, a, a resource that has a population of 400,000. And the result is none because there's nothing that, uh, that shows that there is any resource that, um, uh, that has 4, um, four million uh, inhabitants. 
uh, if we wanted a positive answer, so a, a true as an answer, we might want to ask whether there is a city that has population 3 million. In this case, the result is actually true. Similar to ask queries, we, talk about, we talked about construct queries um, in the earlier slides. The um, um, uh, construct query allows you to translate a matched subgraph, so a requested subgraph, into a graph with a new shape. This is very useful when you are requesting information from a data set which is online, imagine DBpedia, for example, and you want to uh, extract a subgraph from this very large graph and, um, and then uh, use it for your own uh, purposes. So in this case, we are requesting uh, uh, in the construct, you uh, you write the, the new shape of your graph. And in the where clause, you write the shape of the, uh, the, the, the subgraph uh, from, the, um, uh, the, from the graph you're looking for. Uh, in this case, we are looking for somebody that is declared as a, as a teacher. Uh, and then this might have certain predicates and certain objects. And then this object uh, has a population uh, of a given number. And we also additionally include the filter. If we were not including this filter, the results might be different. So um, the, the results that we get in this moment is that we have teacher. So Ilaria is being matched because it's declared that a teacher. And then the, the graph pattern collects both Amsterdam and Rome because uh, we don't have we have a variable as predicate so both born in and ex libs are um, bound to the variable pred um, and then uh, and then the, the, the city has as a given population so both Rome and Amsterdam are declared as having a certain population so at these triples the we would have two cities in um, uh, as a as a result in our cons in our new graph. But then we have a filter. We have a filter on on a population which is higher than one million. Therefore, uh, the the Amsterdam information is lost, and the construct query will only return information about Rome, uh, Ilaria, and the. In, um, and its population. And in my construct, I can build the new shape of the graph that I want. In this case, everything that is matched against the subject in the where clause um, will be returned as a triple here. And then I build a new property. I call it lift in city. Everything that is being matched in the where clause against the variable city will be declared as being a new class, which we call big city. So the resulting, the result will be a graph, a graph with a new shape. So you see the lift in is a property that we didn't have in the original graph. Uh, and then you say Laria lived in Rome, which is of type big city. There are um, a huge number of modifiers that you can use. We can sort uh, results in a descending or ascending order, both alphabetically and numerically. Um, you can limit the number of results um, if you get, especially when you query large knowledge graphs, or if you want just want a snapshot of, it, of a data set that you're exploring, uh, you can use the limit. So these are all modifiers that you can use. Uh, as we say, we have filters. We we showed um, in this class we we saw how to um, uh, use filters by um, uh, numericals, but you can filter things according to their um, um, to their language, or also if they actually contain a small string. Um, as I said, the Sparkle specification is the best way to, to, to dig into uh, the right syntax for Sparkle queries. You can do all kinds of things. We can aggregate numericals using count, some minimum, maximum, average, sampling. You can group by and, um, and have um, an overview of, uh, of a, a projection of the table. Um, if you recall name graphs from the classes, from previous classes, you can uh, query, you can run Sparkle queries only on a portion of a graph, a portion that is called with a name graph. Uh, you can do negation. So if you, if you want to return all results, but something with a specific characteristics, you can use the minus. 
Um, and additionally, you have all kinds of functions like if bound exists or not exists or in and not in. Um, uh, you can uh, do type checking like is blank, is a blank node, is it a literal, is it a numeric, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, the uh, Sparkle is really complete. You can do a lot of things with that. So I highly recommend you to look into the specification. Additional tutorials you might be looking at are also pointed in these slides. Um, it's it's uh, the best way to learn how to use Sparkle is to uh, practice uh, with queries uh, as much as you can. So uh, if you are interested in in uh, in, uh, in a tutorial similar to this one, you can look at the slides. Uh, otherwise, we will be practicing both in uh, in, a in 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 the lab following this class and in an advanced Sparkle um, class that we will have uh, in the next weeks. This is the end of the querying knowledge graph uh, lesson. Thank you very much.